Hello, students. Faisal Rajkiran from Bosco Spew College. Bosco Spew College is known to transcend students towards excellence, keeping the upcoming SSLC exams in mind. We are organizing a subject related discussion to enable the students to perform better in the upcoming examinations. So I'm discussing the 10th standard chemistry paper. I have 13 questions to discuss here. So let us start one by one. So I have the first question here is, the pH of four acids are namely given. That is PQRS. I think you will find a two, you will find five, three, six respectively. The strongest acid among these are. Now, when we are solving this question, simple question to answer. pH, acidic strength, pH scale if I take zero, seven, and 40. So my dear students, less than seven, it is acidic, and more than seven, it is basic. So as we move from seven to six or five, four, three, two, one, acidic character goes on increasing. And move from seven onwards, it is more of basic. So your question here is very clearly suggesting that that is strongest acid among these. The answer is, first question is, A, that is P. Why P is selected? Because the value, as you know the value, it is going to be two. It is two here. Two is acidic in nature. Two is more of acidic in nature, students. That's why we pick the option P that has got a pH of two here in this case. Hope you have understood this particular question. A very simple question to start off with the session. Let's have the second question, students. As the pH value of solution decreases, he's talking about the pH value. By the way, you should know the formula for pH. What is the formula for pH? The pH formula is pH is equal to negative log base 10 of H plus ion concentration. Of course, we discuss in higher level more problems. pH negative log base 10 of H plus. So that means pH can be written as log into base 10 of one by H plus ion concentration. Definitely they are inversely proportional to each other students. When they are inversely proportional to each other, what is that concept? As the pH value of a solution decreases, is trying to tell that pH value is decreases. So what does it mean? The number of H plus ion obviously increases. That is B is right answer here. So number of the H plus ion, which will contribute towards the pH, very, very important factor that is increases. So H plus ion increase, obviously pH value decreases. Hope it is a clear, a simple a definition. That is pH. Moving on to the third question. What is this third question? The correct method of diluting acid is. <clears throat> if you dilute the acid, a very strong acid, you have to be very, very careful. You need to be very careful in a sense. What is we need to do here is, Diluting an acid is a vigorous exothermic, exothermic, lot of heat is liberated, exothermic process. Uh, acid is added <clears throat> to water here. So if you take the water here and you need to add acid, the option number three, that is D is correct. Add acid to the water and stir gently. This is an exothermic process students, you have to be very, very careful. Never do the reverse, it will spurt here. So it's a general knowledge concept, add acid to the water and <clears throat> stir gently. That's the answer for the question number three. That is how do you dilute the acid? This is the way we need to dilute it. Remember next time may not be that uh, only for the examination point of view, you are knowing next time in case, uh, you are doing any practicals or when you are diluting in acids, see to it that you add acid to the water slowly because it is an exothermic reaction. Okay, right. That was a question number three. Now question number four, it is the answer A is right. Question number four, rainwater is a slightly acidic 
when pH is less than 5.6. It's also called as the acid rain. Thunderstorm whenever taking place, the, you know, with the rain, followed by the rain, that time it is more of acidic because sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxides will be there and make the water to be acidic. So pH value of rainwater that makes survival of aquatic life difficult is less than, okay, difficult, the option is difficulty is less than 5.6. For the question number four, answer is A is right answer. Okay, that was also, in fact, a fact-based questions. Question number five, an alloy, alloy, alloy having that uh, mixture, compositions, alloy, you know, mixture of two metals, that is lead and tin has been given. You must have come across various uh, alloys in your uh, school subject. But the question here is lead and tin, the option number five is C, that is the solder. Okay, lead and tin is there. That is the alloy which is there in the option number five. Solder is correct, the answer. So make sure that this area you will read and perhaps not only this, other options also memorize and go. This is more of memory oriented stuff. We don't find anything logically, uh, anything you are getting the answers. It's more related to the uh, fact-based concepts here. So we go to the question number six. This is actually reactivity. Perhaps it is more of reactivity. So how do we discuss this question? See here, iron displays copper from copper sulfide. Displacement. It is going to be a displacement reaction student. Okay, you must have studied displacement reaction. Iron displaces copper from copper sulfate. Zinc displaces iron from iron sulfate. Okay, so the option for sixth question answer is A is right. So it is going to be a zinc above in the series, then comes iron and copper. This is actually, we call it as a uh, you know, series. Okay, electrochemical series we call it as. So zinc is above in the series, so it can displace. Definition wise, we say a metal which is found above in the series can displace other element which found below in the actual series is called electrochemical series. That comes in electrochemical series here. Electrochemical series we are talking. So zinc displaces iron from iron sulfate. In fact, iron displaces copper from copper sulfate. Obviously, this is the order of reactivity. And the answer for the sixth question is A is right. You have to be very careful because sometimes what you see, and this is the different platform this year, because you used to write subjective, and this is more of MCQ based this year. Suddenly, in the examination mode, you know, your mind will be thinking correctly that is zinc iron. And while shading, you make a mistake. Be careful with respect to shading the o sheets or OMR sheets, we call it as. The number seven, this is a thermite process. Thermite process, question number seven, when we are trying to tell aluminum, if I take a Fe2O3 and it gives rise to iron and aluminum oxide. So two aluminum, iron oxide, two iron, Al2O3. Aluminum reduces iron oxide to iron. So what is the use of used? Question is not that process. What is the use? So question number seven, we need to go for the option number B. Join cracked machinery parts. We need to crack that, uh, you know, that already machine, which is cracked. We need to join them. We use it. Okay, this is called thermite process. If you use aluminum, that is called aluminothermite process, we call it as. We reduce that emetite Fe2O3 into iron and that get joined in between the broken rails. And you can join that broken rails. That's what it is used to seal the railway tracks and machineries. This is what uh, you know we call it as thermite process student. So seventh question, option B is a right answer. Okay, so it's an easy question. One can able to understand without any difficulty. Number seven, that was. Eighth question, the hydrocarbon that undergo addition reaction among the following is, among the following, the addition reaction. If I take this question, eighth one, option for this as a D. Now, what is this? Let's have one, two, three, three carbon 
and we make it a double bond here. Okay, EH3 here and EH here. Okay, then four is over valency two, two, three, four, two, three, four, three plus one, four. Right, the valency is satisfied here. Six it is. Okay, it is called propene. This particular compound is called propene. A double bond is there. Obviously, unsaturation. Methane is saturated. This is number C, that is uh, methane, saturated student. It has got single bonds are present in it, a saturated one. This is ethane. Ethane means C2H6. C2H6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ethane. And we have got 1, 2, 3. This is 3. This is 3. 6 plus 2, 8. Propane. This is going to be the propane student. And this is a propene. There is a double bond. Pi electrons are there. We call it as pi bond, sigma bond. Pi bond makes it more reactive. That's why question number eight, we should get the option number D, the right answer here. That is C3H6 students. That's called as propene. Yes, you can write down and see the addition reaction, how the reaction among the following hydrocarbon that undergo addition reaction among the following is unsaturated. That is D is right answer. That was the question number eight. Methane check, ethane two carbon, valency of the carbon. Make sure that valency of the carbon is correct. Valency of the carbon is four. One should not go wrong with the valency. Uh, very, very careful in the exam. So in a hurry burry, sometimes a valency, you will not able to get it properly. We are careful with a valency. Number nine, a cyclopentane. Let us see the cyclopentane. How do we write down that cyclopentane? Pentane, five carbon, cyclo, cyclic, one, two, three, four, and five. This is cyclopentane, children. Let us make the valency, one, two, three, four. This is the hydrogen. To satisfy the valency, here is, we make it, Hydrogens here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here. So this is what I have written. Now let's see cyclopentane as a molecular formula C5H10. Check it is 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Perfect. It has a single bond, means a covalent bond. Mutual exchange of bond, single bond, covalent bond. How many are there? So question number nine, your answer should be how many the answer. We check this, how it goes. One, two, three, four, five. This is between carbon, carbon, five. And here it is, 10 are there, obviously 15, because two you have to add, two into five, 10, 10 plus five. 15 covalent bonds are there in the question number nine, cyclopentane, that is 15 covalent bonds are present, okay? It's a single bond. Obviously it is a single bond between carbon, carbon, and there is a two single bonds between the hydrogen atoms to satisfy the valency. Once again, satisfying the valency is playing a vital role. A little bit hesitation or make a mistake, you will go with the wrong options. So you have to be very, very careful with respect to the valency of carbon. One should not go wrong with that. Okay, number 10. Identify the unsaturated compounds in the following. Unsaturated compounds in the following is, if I take the 10th one, D as an option, which consists of two and three. Two and three is in and in. This is in, this is in. You need to check here that in. In is a single bonded alkane. You can see the suffix. Suffix is in. In is single bonded compounds. In, in is double. You can understand in is double bonded and in is a triple bonded. Okay, so you will be understanding that alkane here and alkene and alkyne. Alkene is a double bonded, okay? And triple bond is alkyne. Alkane is single bonded compounds. So this is a students, it is called saturated. Alkanes are called and alkene and alkyne are called unsaturated compounds unsaturated they are. So our option is already mentioned that. Question number 10, saying that D option, which consists of in and I.
okay they are unsaturated so double bond and triple bond unsaturation we can find out that was the question number 10 students here okay easy questions that was also a very simple question without any difficulty one can come to the conclusion and say this is the answer moving on to the question number 11 okay so isomerism so when it comes to isomers so what is the word called iso the word iso is the same students and mer means parts that is same parts so the compound having the same molecular formula molecular formula is same but different structural arrangements are called 11th one isomers different structural isomers structural isomers are they we call it as okay same molecular formula you will be learning chain position functional those things are coming under structural isomer structural arrangement are called isomers like if i take one carbon two carbon three carbon four carbon in one parent chain we can make one two three and one as a branching yes number of carbon remain the same okay if you check the number of carbon in this case let us make three here to satisfy the valency three here two here and two here this is three here this is three here this is three here and this is one here you can see the number of carbon four number of carbon four five plus five h is ten here nine plus one ten c4 h10 that's what i said they are structural arrangement are called isomer students so number 12 in a b c elements the atomic mass of A is 150. A is 150. And atomic mass of B is 200. Then atomic mass C is a dash. So A plus C divided by 2 is equal to B. You need to use this formula. A is 150. Unknown C divided by 2. B is 200. This is going to be 150 plus C is equal to 400. C is equal to 400 minus 150. It is 250 option B. That is 250 is correct answer. You use this particular formula, isn't it? So when you use this particular formula, A plus C divided by two is equal to B. We will be getting that answer as 250 in this category. Okay, students, there was A, B, C. One was unknown. They have given atomic mass of A and atomic mass of B was given. Asked to find out the atomic mass of C and the atomic mass of C was found to be 250 in the question number uh, two elements. Okay, so that is the 12th question. So let's go to the 13th and the last question that is, so we have already worked out that 12th, the 13th question, which of the following statement is correct? Sometimes incorrect they ask, so you have to be very quickly highlight what is asked correct, right? Yes. First thing is, uh, you have to make sure that we are finding out correct. What is correct in the question number 13? Sodium atom is larger. Sodium atom is larger in size than potassium atom. Sodium atom is larger in size than lithium atom. Chlorine atom is larger in size than sodium atom. Aluminium atom is larger in size. Now, for this question, uh, when we are trying to tell the 13th question, answer B is right. Let us see between potassium, sodium, and lithium. See, students, when we are saying lithium and sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, I think we are not interested. We see lithium uh, to sodium. The number of shells are increasing here. It is two shells were there. Shells were two. Now it has become three. So obviously sodium atom is larger in size than compared to lithium. Perfect answer. That is B correct. But having said that, sodium and potassium. Sodium is larger in size than potassium. Okay, no, may not be the right answer. Chlorine is sodium and then comes to chlorine. You're coming across the period in the periodic table. When you move from left to right, size has to decrease. Size has to decrease because you're adding electron to the same shell. And aluminum, the same. Aluminum atom is larger. Aluminum, what happens once again? It is sodium, 11, 12 is magnesium, and then comes aluminum. So we are going from left to right in the periodic table. 
So you are adding electron to the same shell, second only. So what happens? Effective nuclear concept charge, effective nuclear charge concept will come. According to that, electrons are dragged closer to the nucleus, size decrease. So that was the 13th question. Answer was B. So with that, uh, I'll complete the small session on 10th chemistry, how to tackle the chemistry questions, especially based on MCQ, I explained. So wishing you all the best students, do well in the examination. Hope you come up with the flying colors. Thank you. Thank you one and all.